It's Steam Next Fest 2023, February edition, and it's the racing video. So I've gone through 11 demos. I'm going to give you my thoughts and feelings on them and whether or not they're staying on my wish list or not after playing the demo. And the first one I'm opening up this video with is Gene Rally 2 because it is the demo that I wanted to play and experience across all of Steam Next Fest. And I have to say, whilst I'm largely satisfied and very positive about it, I don't think it was the best demo to showcase the game as an experience to people who have never played the original Gene Rally. The beauty of the original Gene Rally is that there's so much user-generated tracks and car content that it's just an endless supply of things, so a sequel has to kind of demonstrate that really well. The track editor is just as intuitive and, and easy to understand and pick up, and the barrier to entry to making a track is so low in this game. It's fantastic, and I'm delighted to say that that carried across from the original to the sequel. Being able to make a track is just literally pasting some tarmac or something around and then drawing and clicking on like an AI line so that it eventually kind of joins up. And then you just go racing and you can do loads of other stuff about dropping in like additional objects or putting in a pit lane so that people can go in and repair damage. You can change terrain, you can change where the water level is, you can have a variety of different tarmacs. You can do all kinds of different things in the different levels and be very creative in what you build. And it's so easy and intuitive, um, especially now that they've got things where you can draw straight lines, <laughs> which was always my problem with the original, because I was always just like painting like I was painting in paint, <laughs> which you can still do here and get away with. The actual racing, though, I was heavily limited in this demo to three courses, three laps per race. And there was a race on tarmac, ice and dirt. And whilst I was really pleased that the different terrains really did handle differently, it felt like every terrain was 20% more soapy than what it should have been for my personal liking. Because, um, and this will be down to the car that it's chosen, because the idea is that you've got loads and loads of different cars and you can make your own physics for them. It felt like there needed to be a very floaty car and a very grippy car to showcase and really hammer home that point that everything is so customizable in this game. But yeah, the tracks felt retro. I still love the graphical style. The low poly kind of homemade aesthetic really works well with this like slightly hyper 3D version of what the original Gene Rally was all about. And yeah, I'm still super hyped. This is still a day one. This is still on my wish list. I just think the demo may have slightly undersold what Gene Rally 2 is all about. So get hyped everyone because I am. <laughs> The next game on my list is Formula Retro Racing World Tour, and this is a sequel to Formula Retro Racing, which I reviewed on this channel a while back and gave it, I think it was a 6 out of 10, because whilst it nails the retro aesthetic of like early 90s, um, Sega Rally, Daytona 500, chunky polygon graphics, and it had a very benign and very easy to deal with arcade handling, there was no actual difficulty to the game whatsoever. And I have to say, whilst the aesthetic is improved and the handling now actually has reason to break, hurrah, um, which is a great step forward for the game, this game and the demo itself was riddled with bugs and issues for me. The main issues are that, again, there is no difficulty to the actual racing that goes on in this game. The AI are not great but they're also totally dumb. So they'll just weave across the track like they're doing a zigzag, um, not really paying attention to what's going on around you and almost ramming the other AI off the lines and into the barriers, which felt a bit odd. But alongside that, you've then got a really harsh time trial limit. And I was racing around the Rome circuit, which is basically Discount Monza. And I was leading the race and I absolutely spanked all of the AI but the time limit was running out and I couldn't see how I could have done it any better because I was running at maximum speed in a straight line with the car that I was given. So there doesn't seem to be any kind of leeway around the time limits that makes sense if you choose like the slower car on the faster circuit. So that felt a bit odd. This game gave in the demo two different cars, a formula car and a stock car. Every time I drove the stock car, the game crashed or it ground to a halt where there was like 0.01 frames per second. And then if ever I was in a stock car and it got anywhere, as soon as an AI crashed, which would be so often because they're zigzagging everywhere, the game then froze and broke then. So this game's supposed to be coming out at the end of March. 
I'm a bit concerned that there's something that game breaking still in the demo and happening happening now. So I'm going to personally hold off on this. It was always going to be a sale game or a deep sale game probably for me anyway. Um, but it's staying on the wish list for the time being and hopefully it'll improve. The next game up is Rally Gator. And this is a little bit like Snuggle Truck and the other kind of games where you're trying to balance a car going across a 2D environment. But this is much more puzzle based rather than balancing on a beam because uh, and it's got much more rally content in it as well. So you're trying to get through like big mud slogs with your uh, rally gator car and like launching yourself across gaps, pushing buttons, pulling levers knocking and punching boxes out the way, all of that kind of stuff, because you've got a punching glove at the front of your car. But this was an example of a demo done right, because what it then done was introduce you to the fact that you're trying to get across like a, by a giant chasm of water, but you can't. And it wasn't until I splashed in the water thinking I was going to have a game over that I realised your gator, your rally gator car turns into a submarine. And so there's all different types of vehicles, I'm assuming, that you can then transform into. And that opens it up more to being a time trial speed runner style game, but much more puzzly elementy put into it. And that really surprised me. And this was a demo that left me wanting more in a good way because it handled well, the puzzles were well thought out, they felt varied, and everything just played and felt like how it should, whilst being cutesy and fun and enjoyable to play. So yeah, two thumbs up for Rally Gator, definitely staying on my wish list. Next up is Race Rocket Arena Car Extreme. <laughs> That's an SEO game, of the name of ever there was one. And this is a kart racer that reminds me a little bit of a cross between Motorstorm and a PS1 game called Scars, um, which is where everything in a kart racer was slightly more aggressive because it was much more around dealing damage to opponents rather than racing. And this game takes the same approach. There were three different modes but the most amount of time seemed to be spent on not winning races, but damaging and killing opponents around you and watching that damage score rack up. So it wasn't about winning and leading and racing for half the time. It was about staying back and keeping behind people and picking up various power ups. And then, although they recharge, you can pick up the power ups to hold like five missiles at once and then decide when you're going to time them. Everyone gets a warning of the missiles coming and you've got a limited amount of uh, shields. So it's about working out whether or not you pick up more weapons to go and attack or whether you want to go for a shield so that you can then buff out and like stop another attack and someone else scoring points. The game played really well, which was why I was slightly confused that it went for a damage first over a racing first, because that to me felt like it would be a cop out if a game didn't handle well. But this game does. So it drives well, it looks good, frame rate worked well, the actual weapons seem to be quite good as well. This is going to be potentially a sleeper in a lot of people's wish lists. But I would recommend it to be put onto other people's wish lists because this feels like an aggressive rocket fueled cart game um, looking quite promising. So thumbs up from me. The next game on this list is probably my surprise thumb up, but it's such a big thumbs up and it's called Slope Crashers. This is a downhill snowboarding and hang gliding game which sees you take on various different like penguins and animals and so on and so forth in an either like there's different types of modes so you've got like a racing mode which is purely about who can get like across a certain amount of laps first there's a time trial mode but there's also a trick and stunt mode where you're trying to perform various different grinds so it feels like uh, SSX mixed with Tony Hawk's in a way because you're trying to do all of these different tricks as you're lining off of jumps and so on and so forth but because it's huge mountains and there's massive cliff drops what you can also do in the air is then transition to hang gliding and try and get yourself through various different loops and score points that way too. Now, it handles really nicely because it's responsive and forgiving, but also hugely malleable. So sometimes with these games, they run too fast for their own good. But with slope crashes, as you went through the different speeds and difficulties, 
it still everything felt open and wide and spacious enough to feel doable and then when you add in things like weapons where you can have like homing missiles and other people or you can have like um mud dra drawn up so that it slows people down it just felt like a really really well put together arcade fun experience that had various different slices of the pie that all worked and felt equal to each other. So yeah, super loved this. The characters all played and felt different too with different attributes, just like some kart games do when you start to like uh, boost out different stats of like handling versus speed and so on and so forth. Two hearty thumbs up, staying on my wish list. This is a potential day one for me, this one. So yeah, definite recommendation. Next one up is Tray Racers, and this is another downhill sliding game, but it's done a very different approach to it. In this game, you're going through various different deserts, and each level is procedurally generated into three arenas. So you might get like two desert areas and then a village area, or you might get like a forest biome and then a desert and then a village, or whatever it is that you're pulling together. But the idea is that you are moving left and right to try and graze as many objects as possible to get a continuous speed boost to go faster and faster and faster. This game feels more like a downhill bobsleigh, but in a desert Sahara sandstorm, because you're trying to avoid like hundreds of cactuses or going through a rock formation as close to the edge as possible so you can get that speed boost by grazing everything. But as soon as you hit something, obviously, you're going to slow down and stop. And everything is about time trial against the clock. Now, I really liked the way how this game played out and the fact that it's procedural generation and that there seems to be an endless supply of levels should you want them. But it then shoehorns this into what feels like an online-only experience. And there's no mention of offline single-player content or local multiplayer content anywhere in this game. So, I have a bit of a reservation around this one because... You can either join online and it works like Trackmania where you get like three minutes to put in your best time before you then get chalked up to a leaderboard and then like winner gets the most points and you move to the next round. Or you can go through a daily run that's got an online scoreboard and you get to play the last seven days worth of tracks um, that are constantly like rotating on and off again. But again, lacking that single player offline, what happens when the servers go down? This game is then dead. So I want to be in, a, in an age where games don't seem to last very long. I want to make sure that my purchase has longevity beyond the servers. And that's my main concern with Trey Racers. But the actual core concept of the game I quite like. Next up is Speedonauts. And this is a 2D skiing game in space. This is a game that has frustration and addiction in equal measure, and your mileage will definitely vary depending on how easily annoyed you are with a game like this. I do get easily annoyed, but I found this still quite addictive because it feels fair and you're always discovering new ways of trying to get around different objects and the levels are designed to try and catch you out basically the first time you play it. You'll run left and right to try and like get from hut to hut in this spacious world. But as soon as you hit a slope, it becomes like a ski jumping game where you then bomb down. But then you might want to ease off early if you're trying to get across a giant chasm, but there's a really low ceiling. Or it could be that you've got a huge gap that you can't get across. And then you have to tactically use your jetpack to try and boost yourself off of the ski jump to get that um, trajectory much higher and further. It's all about the nuance in how those different physics work. You also have the ability to like land your skis harder and faster than what gravity normally allows. So it's about trying to work out how to trick yourself around all of the different levels. The levels are hard, especially the ones on hard and extreme. Um, it will frustrate and make you scream, but I found it oddly addictive, so it's definitely staying on my wish list. The next game on this list is called Ring Racer, which I'm so conflicted on because I like the concept, but it didn't play very well to me. The idea, and it's very similar to, you know those like buzz wire games where you've got to get the loop across the wire without touching it? It's a bit like a racing game equivalent of that, but you've got nine racers as rings and then like um, figures 
the kind of standoff of the ring. And so you can re rotate in 360 degree around the circumference of the wire that you're racing along, and you kind of press forward to accelerate around this wire loop. There's various different objects in the way, though, that cover up like 90 degrees of this ring or 180. And so what you're doing is boosting and then rotating around so that you can then almost like hole in the wall style, get your character through all of the different um, mechanisms. The problem with this game is not that, although the camera work had left a little bit to be desired, it's the fact that the races were so short and there didn't seem to be any way to actually improve your position. The AI also sometimes just gets stuck. So you'd either come last or first and nothing in between, depending on if the all the AI gets stuck somewhere or nothing happened in a level. So therefore you are always last because everyone's running at the same tempo and no one had an issue. So this felt like a really good idea that's desperately in need of refinement to make a race feel like a race because otherwise everyone just ended up finishing one to nine in the exact same grid positions that you start with because nothing really changed and everyone's running at exactly the same speed all the way through. The next racing game is called Octane Remix and I struggled with this one. It's a game that works off of a map that tries to procedurally generate various different races for you to try and get from A to B on without crashing and totaling your car. There are different other uh, races involved in the race, but it didn't seem to really matter whether or not I won the race or not. I still progressed. It was more around the fact of did I actually survive? And that's because there are various different traps like laser beams or uh, things to fall off of or gaps in the road, or 360 cylinders to fall out of, or massive like crushers that would come down from the ceiling. And so long as you still had some health at the end of the level, you were okay. You could boost to try and win the race as well, but then that would overheat your car, so you'd need to use your boost effectively. But this game felt like it's lacking identity and a goal to get through, because it was giving me the same ideas for each race time and time again. It felt chaotic in the way how the handling felt too fast for the tracks, um, or too slow for the tracks, sorry. Your car was too fast for it, so I kept on like smashing around on edges. It felt really unsatisfying to drive and play with, and so this doesn't stay on my wish list and I have removed it. The next game on this list I've also removed from my wish list, but it's for a very specific reason which might not apply to other people. It's called Defy Gravity, and my main issue that I have with this specific game is that it masquerades itself as a Wipeout or F-Zero style game, where you're flying through various environments in like a futuristic space uh, ship trying to like do battle and so on and so forth. But it handles like an on-rails cart game. And it's really difficult to describe how this kind of did my brain in, because when you drive, and I'm having to say drive with this, you're going down a set track. So you're going up, down, banking round corners and so on and so forth. So, but it's in the air and it's invisible, but you're stuck on rails. So instead of like, if you're turning, you turn left. When you turn left in the turn, you're going to the left side of the central track rather than turning left. And this felt deeply unsatisfying to play because then what it would start to do is it would have like a very slow, gentle drift of you moving towards the edge of a track without you actually fully turning. And so sometimes you'd be like going up a corkscrew and you would have to hold left to get round something. Um, whereas then when you'd go round other corners, you didn't need to steer at all because you're staying in the centre of the track. And there was no real rhyme or reason as to why something was or wasn't happening. And so it didn't feel like I was playing a racing game. It felt like I was playing a on-rails dodge-em-up 
and that wasn't what I signed up for and then it's not what the rest of the trappings of the game felt like it was doing so it just felt like a mishmash of ideas that didn't belong together and so I really didn't enjoy my time with it however it does look and feel unique and if that's a selling point to you you might want to put keep it on your wish list so apologies that that's a bit of a like cop out but I really didn't like this but I think other people might really like it the final game on this list is called Driftwood, which sees you playing as a sloth called Eddie who likes to longboard. This game I'm probably going to describe as the skitching and road rash for the wholesome crowd. <laughs> but that might be stretching it a little bit because but it felt similar in the time the way how gameplay plays out. Because you're going down downhill courses of roads and mud paths and so on and so forth. And what you're doing is trying to avoid the traffic coming towards you, but run close to it so that you can get some scores. But then like riding through the leaves so that you can chain those up with drifting round corners so that you can achieve a higher score alongside your time trial as you go down finding alternative paths and the quickest route through things. This is quite minimalist in the way how it goes around doing things, which is why I think it will be Marmite to some people. But it's going to apparently have a low price point to reflect that because it's a small team of two people building this game. And so what I would say is if you like wholesome experiences that are distilled down to the purest gameplay element of something, then I think Driftwood will definitely be up your alley because the actual gameplay of longboarding feels flowy and artistic in a way that feels much more like like an on-rails hang glider experience is what I would probably say because it just flows nicely and everything is curvy. You can't do like big angles and stops in this game. And I really liked that because it felt uh, sumptuous to play, which feels like a weird descriptor for a racing game. But it just, it felt bountiful as you kind of move around and f fluid but slow and sloth-like. So really applaud the game for that. It's just obviously there isn't much else besides that. So you need to be comfortable that this is just you versus the road in time trials for local and potentially, I think, online leaderboards. And that's it. And you need to be comfortable with it. If you are, keep this one on your wish list. I think it plays really, really nicely. If not, obviously there's no open worlds. There's no tricks beyond a few like basic ones. There's not going to be like uh, ollies and all of that kind of stuff just the downhill experience so know that going in and you'll be fine and that is my racing selection anything that particularly catch your eye drop it down in the comments please do let me know um i really enjoy doing these steam next fest videos and trying to elevate some of the lesser known games out there for people so i hope i've helped you find some kind of gems for the future take care higher plane games is part of the higher plane network a completely independent media outlet supported by people like you. The goal is to create the best possible content that cultivates a richer indie scene for games as well as music and entertainment. To find out more and to get involved, visit patreon.com forward slash higherplanenetwork. Your support makes all the difference and in return you'll gain access to bonus content and downloads. Thank you for watching.